Now after that is the two words, developing aspiration for enlightenment, I enter the profound path. So when we see now these two are talking about the bodhicitta, these two lines. So bodhi means enlightenment, chitta means heart. Or in another word we can say the heart that desires enlightenment. Right? So without understanding refuge, we will not understand we will not have a renunciation and without renunciation and the sense of understanding that clear and empty nature of the mind, enlightenment is what I desire, we will not really be able to practice the bodhicitta because we don't know. We ourselves do not desire enlightenment. Why will we have a heart of enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings? So, <clears throat> so heart of, so bodhi, when we call somebody, he is a bodhisattva, she is a great bodhisattva. You know, or I am a bodhisattva. I am bodhisattva practitioner. I am part of the bodhisattva. You know, Sometimes we we think that just because someone is very kind, he is a bodhisattva. She is a bodhisattva. Maybe she is a vegetarian. Very wonderful. You know, it's amazing. That is, you know, that itself. Some of my my gurus used to say that just because you are a vegetarian is a great practice, even though you are doing nothing else, you know, because it is like you have given you know refuge. You know, to all the animals in the world, you are telling them, you can sleep in the peace now. You know, I will not be eating you guys. It is like a ghost comes and tells you, don't worry, I will not haunt you anymore. You know? That's why even if you are not able to give up all the meat, even if you say that from today onwards, I will not eat crocodile. You know? Crocodiles will be very happy. You know? There are many crocodiles in the world. You know? They will be like, thank you so much. And you will get a lot of merit, even though you may never eat. I mean, you may not get also, I don't know. I mean, at least in the Himalaya, we don't get, you know. And hopefully, we will not get to in the future. <clears throat> so even with that, there is a tremendous amount of merit by taking such a vow too. I will not eat meat of tiger, monkey, you know, etc. Even if you're not able to give up. Because it is like giving refuge to all of this. Now, how many, you know, Millions of animals of that species. So, mm, yet, that kind of person we do not call bodhisattva. You know, does not fulfill the requirement to be called a bodhisattva. In order to be called bodhisattva, we need these two qualities. The heart of enlightenment. That means someone who wants heart refers to someone who wish to benefit all the sentient beings. And uh, what he wants, he or she wants to give to them is not money, not, not just money. Yes, money, yes, for sure. We want to give Green Tara, for example, when she, become, when she was becoming, you know, the... You know, yes, anyway, we'll, you know, for example, uh, the Green Tara, the history of the green Tara, the, you know, that there's of course outer green Tara, outer Guru Padma Sambhava, inner secret Guru Padma Sambhava, you know, outer inner. So outer Tara is your, your own Guru in the human form, is a Nirmanakaya form of the Tara. When we talk of Tara from the pure land in such and such a pose, etc., white Tara, etc., we are talking of Sambhogakaya, you know, and then the, the, and then the, when we talk of the Secret Tara, we are talking of your own niche of the mind, which is inseparable from the Tara from the beginning's time. So anyway, when we talk of the external Tara, or you can call it the you know, the, the green Tara, she was a princess before, and then it is said she invited all the Arahats and the enlightened monks and offered lunch and service for many months. And at the time of, time of the dedication, the monks made a, made a dedication that may you become enlightened and in the male form. They were born as a female. But Tara said that, no, I want to be born as a female because enlightenment is in your mind. If you realize the nature of your mind, it's enlightened. If you do not realize it, you are not. It's, it has, mind has no gender. Nature has no gender. So she promised, she vowed to become a female Buddha. And then when she was becoming Buddha, she saw that many people have so many sufferings. They want children, they want wealth, they want... They're in the prison, they're being poisoned, they're harmed by negative spirit. And Tara thought that, you know, if, for example, if someone is very, very sick right now, very hungry right now, and Tara tells her, I will not give you food, but I'll give you Dharma, come, receive teaching, you know. They are not interested, you know. They say, give food first. 
So that's why Tara made a promise that, you know, first I will f give them all the temporary happiness that they want, take away their relative suffering. May I, when I become a Buddha, because all my practice, my karma, in the future when I become, but ultimately may I give them the enlightenment too. So that is why it is, you know, it is, yes, it's okay to say Tara is a wish fulfilling Buddha, and there are many, many historical records of Tara protecting people, benefiting, even point to one of His Holiness' own guru, called Kato Wonto Rinpoche, said, you know, when he was chased by, you know, people with, you know, shooting at him, he made a vow to recite the 21 Tara 100,000 times, and it is said that in the night, when he used to take off his clothes to sleep, or in kind of dust them, Bullets used to fall off, but they were not harmed, you know, him and his entourage. And similar, like there are many from the ancient Indian time to now, there are many stories of the Green Tara protecting. But, you know, it is the, but Green Tara is not just, a, you know, limited to that. Green Tara also wishes to give enlightenment or, you know, creates a condition for us to give, in, effort to give us enlightenment. So, <clears throat> that is why, the even the to to be considered a bodhicitta, we have to wish to give all the sentient beings all the temporary they need, but the wish to give enlightenment, because enlightenment is the biggest happiness. As I mentioned yesterday, you know that uh, if you if someone is afraid of snake, and you come and protect that person from the snake and give him talk and encouragement, yes, it is very good. But the best is to make them realize that there was no snake at all. It was just a dark rope. You know, what we consider happiness or suffering, it never inherently existed. That you yourself are naturally, from the beginning of this time, Tara, you are a Buddha. Your nature of the mind is undefined of nature. That is the best gift. Because that is a solution. Once you're able to give that, they will not have to come back to you and ask for help all the time. Because they themselves have, can help themselves and help others too. That is why the best gift one can give to any sentient being is a gift of Dharma which leads them to enlightenment, you know, aw awaken, awakenness. Otherwise, they'll, we will be searching for, you know, source of happiness and suffering in many other, many places. Yesterday we were talking to um, you know, the mind traps and all of that, and some of you have were there. You know. Until we understand this, until we understand the trap of the mind, we will always be deluding ourselves. One thing I forgot to mention yesterday, you know, is that yesterday where we, the place where we gave talk was a prison. You know. So even the prison is actually a mind trap. The prisoners who are there for 10 years feel that they are in a miserable condition, yes, and they are suffering. You know, that I am in a prison, I cannot get out. You know. But strangely enough, the prison guards who are also there, you know, who can go out in the night, but during the day, they too cannot go out, yet they feel very free. You know. I am not in prison. But they are. And if a prisoner's sentence is for 10 years, and the prison guard is working there for 30 years, that means the prison guard has served a longer term than the prisoner. No. And many of us, when we become a bit of wealthy, we also like to erect walls, physical walls, psychological walls, hire a security guard, and, you know, and keep ourselves inside. And we don't feel it's a prison, we feel it's a protection. So until we realize the one's own nature of the mind being, until we will have the delusion, our delusion will continue to create so many traps. That trap that you have in Hong Kong, you will have it in Canada, you will have it in the United States, you will have it in India, you will have it in, you know, Himalaya. You know? Himalaya can give you the conditioned holy place, teaching, environment can help you to break out of that trap, yes. But if you yourself do not break out, just by going to Himalaya, you know, you, we will not be liberated or enlightened just because of the place. So, 
a bodhisattva, heart of the bodhisattva is one who wish to give, you know, the enlightenment and to all the sentient beings. So once we have that deep aspiration in your heart, even though you are, we are unenlightened right now, we are full of desire, ignorance, etc. At that moment, when you genuinely have that aspiration in your, our heart, we become the heart son of Buddhas and Bodhisattva. And from that and moment when we have that, uh, have that genuine aspiration in our heart, the merit that we accumulate is said to be so huge and unimaginable that in, if the entire universe was made physical, it was a physical thing, it will not fit into it. The merit that we get from offering you know, flowers or millions of dollars or etc. is nothing compared to the merit that we accumulate from the heart of aspiration. It's said to be huge. It is huge because you, know, you are basically promising to be a public servant of the universe. And you are serving, you are become the heart son and daughter of Buddhas and Bodhisattva because only reason why Buddha got enlightened is to benefit, to liberate the sentient beings. And you have promised to follow their footstep. To a father and a mother, what more can be a proud moment than to know that your, your children is now you know, on your footstep. And from that onwards, even if you offer a small flower, it, should, it, it will be for the benefit of all the mother sentient beings. And the flower that you offer has a merit billion times more than any other people offering the entire universe filled with a flower. Because you are a bodhisattva, bodhisattvi. And when you genuinely develop that heart, no spirit will harm you. No snakes will harm you. No ghosts will harm you. Elements will not you know, harm you. When you have genuinely able to develop that, why will the spirits harm you? You are working for them. You know? you know, why will you want to hire, you know, harm your public servant? So, <clears throat> there are many, many stories and legends about that, but I think we don't have time. So anyway, now once we have developed that, how can we develop that? There, you know, it, there, you can develop it because of your previous life, you have practiced bodhicitta. In terms of developing it, yes, you know, the, for example, every morning when we say, you know, I'm going to do Tara practice for the benefit of all the mother sentient beings, it's a step, you know, we are opening our heart. Every time we do that, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, right now our hearts are not very opened. Even when, even that we are open to others is with loss of terms and conditions. That's why we are easily upset. A lot of expectations in terms of condition. So when we are able to open our heart, you know, every day through practice, definitely we will be, you know, that it will. Uh, that's one thing. And when we accumulate lots of merit too, it is said the bodhicitta will arise. In the, I think there is a few conditions. It said that few causes. Choktop gyotop sawe to thotop gewa gombe to midin padang tenjungwa shengi tembe semkeche because of the positive friend, that means teacher, teachers and Dharma brother, sister. Because of the, uh, your, because all of us have the Buddha nature, because of the accumulation of the merit, because of listening to Dharma, and because of your practice of the, you know, the, the motivation every day, such kind of, you know, the, your, such kind of the bodhicitta, will can be developed. Now once we have that kind of, you know, that kind of aspiration to, you know, to benefit all the mother sentient being, now how do we, you know, kind of uh, develop that? And for example, there, are, there is the Mahayana way and Vajrayana way. Mahayana way is to firstly, to generate a great sense of love towards one's own parent and understand the sacrifice they made. It is said that we understand the sacrifice of our parent only when we become parent. You know? Then only we understand. There is a saying that before one of the Buddha's uh, disciples, he wasn't a disciple actually, he was, uh, yes, Buddha's disciple was King Bimbisara. 
and he had a son called Ajata Shatru, which means the the you know enemy of the mother, something like that, or enemy of the parent. So it was predicted that he will grow up and kill his parent, and then his mother wanted to kill him, but the father said, "Doesn't matter if it's meant to be; it's our karma." So after then, you know, then later, Buddha Shakyamuni is that cousin, that Devdatta, you know. Devdatta instigated the son and said that, look at your father, he is always respecting Buddha, you know, but he is not really, doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't care about you, he only cares about Buddha, he doesn't want to give up his kingdom. So anyway, it instigated and later the son killed his parent. And after he killed his parent, few minutes after he gave the order, he got a letter saying that, you know, your queen has given birth and he was so happy. And he wanted to congratulate everyone, give holiday. And then he realized that the joy that he felt when he had a child must be the same that his own parents had felt. You know? And then he regretted a lot, but then he could not take back his order. It was already given, it carried out. And then you know, he went through laws of regret, and then Buddha Shakyamuni had to give him a specific teaching for him you know, in order to make him understand that, yes, you must purify all the negative karma you have done. It can be purified. But the father also had accumulated certain karma why all why all of this happened. There was many reasons. But of course, you know, you cannot say that just because somebody has karma, that's why I killed him. Because the more you do this, it perpetuates, you know. Then you kill, then it comes back, then you that's why we had endless samsara. So that is not excuse, yeah. <clears throat> So anyway, <clears throat> then anyway, the uh, so only when we become parent, it is said that we understand. So generating a great sense of love, I think, for one of the blessings, or maybe being in the kind of the you know the Asian tradition, is that generally we have a good relation with our parents. So it is easier to develop that sense of love. And then general, if we are, even if we are not able to, you know, I think one of the reasons we are, especially in I think our, you know, the modern, you know, generation is becoming a bit difficult to have a, you know, kind of have appreciation towards anybody actually, because uh, you know I think we are all given a lot of standards of how our parents are supposed to be, how husbands are supposed to be, how wives are supposed to be. Nobody knows who made this standard, you know, but somehow these standards have come, you know, and that standard seems to be impossible to fulfill. Rather than realizing that, you know, yes, our parents or people in our life may not be perfect. That is because as much as we are influenced by our desire, our anger, our emotion, they are too. You know, yet everybody is trying their best. Right? For example, when we get angry, when we get desire, we are not like, ah, oh, now it's 10 o'clock, 10.30, 10.45, I'm going to get angry. You know? you know, when the anger comes, no choice, no control. When the desire comes, we cannot control it, unless you are a great practitioner. So anyway, you know, that's one way of developing the bodhicitta. Another way of developing the compassion and love is you know, by realizing, this is the Drukpa lineage way, actually, speciality of the Drukpa lineage and Vajrayana, or especially of Drukpa teachings, is that we realize the non non existent in you know nothing existing inherently nothing existing externally by realizing that you know or you can even even say that by realizing the the subtle impermanent that's happening every, all the time you know everything is changing all the time physical body mental you know the the everything is changing constantly nothing existing as it appears to be what you, you know, the, because it's constantly changing, so how can it be, ex exist as it appears to be? So yet, this is something that we are not really aware of, as I mentioned a few days ago. The moment you meet somebody, your meeting has already ended. You know? The moment you become prime minister, your term has already, already started ending. So with that kind of understanding, you know, or with understanding nothing exists inherently, yet all of us are deluded into, you know, physical form, inherently existing, sound existing, emotional inherent existing. And because of that, all of us, including all the mother sentient beings, are going through a tremendous amount of suffering. 
And by developing this kind of understanding, we can generate a sense of compassion for oneself and all the sentient beings equally deluded, even though they may be very so-called very powerful, very successful, very, you know, the happy life, but they do not realize, you know, this illusory nature. They do not realize that, you know, the clock ticking every second, which is, you know, the subtle changes, subtle changing nature. So whichever way is easier for us to develop, you know, we can use it in any way. We, but basically we have to generate a sense of, you know, the, the heart of enlightenment. Now after developing this heart of enlightenment, what are the things that will destroy it? Let's say that due to your teacher's blessing and your learning, etc., you have able to develop the bodhicitta, but does not mean that it will always, if you are not able to protect it, you know, it will not stay there all the time. It will disappear. We may have felt that sometimes we feel we are a very kind person. Then after some time, something, you know, it changes. You know, we, be, we lose our compassion. 